so this idea that if you're saved, you're going to persevere unto the end, it's not reality. And anyone who watches this video knows that in their personal life, look, sometimes you choose to commit sins. You say, well, yeah, that's Old Testament. That's different. Well, what about Demas? What did the Bible say? Demas hath forsaken me, having loved the present world. See, Demas decides to go back to the world. He goes back to his old desires, whether he's chasing after money or he loves the entertainment, whether he's got friends he doesn't want to reject or family. I don't know what it is, but he loved the present world and he departs from Paul. Now, Demas was still saved. Okay, the question of Demas is brought up. Now, he makes the assertion that Demas left. We know that De Demas did forsake Paul, having loved this present world. Uh, we know that in scripture. We do not know his eternal destiny. We're not told that. But we are told that he left and he loved this world. Now when you see that kind of language in the scripture, that's very dangerous language. That's a kind of language which may reveal that his heart was still linked to the world rather than to Christ. So was he saved or was he not saved? I personally doubt that he was actually saved. You go through the book of Hebrews and you see how far a person can go and then actually go into apostasy. And a person can taste of, the, of the, the good word of God, can have the working of the Spirit to a degree, and yet still not be saved. You, know, you, mean, you can see that all through Hebrews. So was Demas saved? You can't assert that he was saved from the Scripture. We just simply don't know. You know so again, there's yet an, another issue of just asserting something rather than actually studying the issue out and to see whether or not that it's actually true. He didn't lose his salvation, but you know, Obviously, he didn't persevere under the end. I suppose Calvinists would say, well, I guess he wasn't really saved. And so they're going to do that to just anybody in the Bible. Concerning Demas, where he says Calvinists would say, well, he wasn't really saved. There's a good chance he wasn't. I don't know the heart. The Bible doesn't specifically say that he was saved. So uh, I look at the scripture, I look at the evidence, and I, I believe that Demas was not saved. Uh, but I might be wrong because we're not told specifically about Demas. Now, uh, you look at the thief on the cross. How do we know the thief on the cross was saved? How do we know he went to heaven? Only because our Lord Jesus Christ told him, today you'll be with me in paradise. I have the scriptural authority to say that that man is going to be in heaven. If the Lord Jesus Christ said it, then it's definitely going to happen. But if not, I'm left to speculation. This is with, with Saul, same with Saul. I personally believe that Saul's probably not saved, but I don't have a definitive answer on that. Uh, he may have been, but I believe chances are slim. You know, when you look at every all the evidence there, Demas, the chances are slim. You know, uh, Ananias and Sapphira, chances are slim, but we're not specifically told. Judas, he's in hell. How do I know that? Because the Scripture calls him the son of perdition, the son of condemnation. So I can, I can make that assertion because the scriptures do. I am bound by the scripture, not by my, my own thinking or my own opinion. To say Demas is in, in heaven or Saul's in heaven is to assert your own opinion rather than the word of God. But you can look at Paul the Apostle and he said he was a carnal Christian. And so this idea that if you're saved you're going to persevere unto the end, it's not reality. And anyone who watches this video knows that in their personal life, Look, sometimes you choose to commit sins. Sometimes you do what's wrong. Sometimes you go to bed at night and you don't have the clearest conscience because you know you didn't live the most godly life the previous day. This idea that if you're really saved, you're going to walk the walk and be a great person, it's ridiculous. Okay. Uh, this is probably getting to the root of the whole issue with Mr. Stuckey. For a person to persevere unto the end, it does not mean that they're going to be sinless unto the end. It doesn't mean that they're going to completely overcome sin in this life and then uh, live a, a sparkling clean holy life until the end and uh, when they get to the end they go to heaven. That's not what we're talking about. Not whatsoever. What we are saying is that you will continually battle with sin. Sin's not going to have dominion over you because we are with, we, we now have Christ in us we have the Holy Spirit guiding us, we have the Word of God, we have the means of all of, of God's preservation given to us in Scripture, the warnings of Scripture which we, which we heed, and we have all, all of these things working with us 
And as we battle, we have our ups and we have our downs. There's going to be times when we are successful and times when we fail when regarding the idea of battling with sin. But we will battle with sin. Now we are going to have times when we are knocked down and we have to seek God's forgiveness. But there's also times when God's going to give us power over sin. When that temptation comes, as a true believer, when the temptation comes, we are not going to be given over uh, to this sin because we have the power of God within us and God graciously grants us strength to overcome. So all of these things are, this, this is what perseverance is all about. People who aren't persevering in the faith, let me give you a picture of them. They hear the word, they maybe might receive it joyfully for a while, but then they turn away from it because of, of the world, they love the things of the world, persecution arises, and uh, they decide it's, it, they don't want this, or they have trouble with their family, their, their wife threatens to leave them, or they're going to be disinherited by a, a Orthodox Jewish father or a Roman Catholic father or whatever who's maybe wealthy. Oh boy, uh, I, I think maybe I better, I better uh, double check on this. And so they, they then re, uh, reject, they, they recant their faith in Christ, and they go back to the way they were. were are these people persevering? No, they're not. Uh, now they may turn back later and say, you know what, that was, that was a wrong decision. Uh, Dad, you might as well disinherit me now. I should not have made that. So, see, so persevering is battling with sin back and forth and back and forth, just as Peter did, back and forth and back and forth. And until you get to the end and you still have, in the end, you still have that faith in Christ. You still believe. You still love Christ. You're still battling sin uh, you're still grasping on to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, you're, 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 there's nothing that, that would, would uh, cause you to let him go. That's what we mean by persevering, that this is going to be consistent throughout your life until the end. So we're, we're not saying by any stretch of the imagination that you're not going to sin uh, and, uh, and fall into sin throughout your life. No, that's not what we're saying. But the reason why he has to say these things is because his evangelism and his theology does not produce believers that are going to be consistent. All of these soul winning campaigns, once again, they have to be justified because they don't go, these people, most of them, 99% of them, don't ever go to church. Their lives are not transformed, but they want to claim that they're saved. So what we have to throw out the, the idea of perseverance, of continuing in the faith. And we can't, we can't have that. So that's the whole reason behind it. Okay, the idea if you're really saved, you're going to walk the walk. I challenge you, get your concordance out, or use your, your uh, smartphone or whatever you, app you might have, and look up the word walk and go through the New Testament. See how the word walk is used in the New Testament. The word walk just simply means to live a life of consistency when it comes to the things of God. We are not going to walk according to the flesh. We're going to walk carefully in guidance of the Spirit. But if we walk, this is 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, a very familiar verse. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. So there's the idea of walking in the light. There's also those who walk in, the, in darkness and walk according to the flesh. They're considered the ones in Scripture described as not being saved. So there's a difference. And how are they identified? By their walk. That's the course of their life. So when we talk about walking, uh, a believer is going to walk consistently in the light. They're going to stumble. They're going to fall on occasion. But they're going to get back up. Though they may fall seven times, they're going to get back up. And they're going to continue on in the faith. They're going to have seek repentance and forgiveness and they'll move on. And they'll be walking in the light, the light of God's Word, the light of truth, the light of Christ. They'll consistently do this because they have the Spirit of God within them. The unbeliever, on the other hand, is going to walk in darkness according to the course of this world. How do you identify them? Because that's what they, what they do. So this whole idea, of what, whatever he's trying to assert, that people are not going to persevere to the end, is just something totally ludicrous totally foreign from the scripture. A believer is going to stay a believer, a, con a person who's going to consistently live for Christ, and once again, not perfectly, 
but they will live for Christ until the day that, that they die, and they will they will they hold on to that faith. They will not turn back from it. But they will continue on until they die battling with sin. Okay, the idea of Paul the Apostle being a carnal Christian. Now there is such a thing as being a babe in Christ and living in such a way that your life is still carnal, that you you are uh, living in a way which is after the flesh simply because you're still a babe. Uh, that That's different from living in complete carnality uh, that uh, when Paul says I am yet carnal I'd like to take a look at that in more detail this idea of, of carnality if we have time we'll look at that at more detail what does that scripture actually teach is it saying that I could remain carnal in the sense that that I have not been converted my life is still the same as what it always has been my thoughts and my uh, 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 being given over to the sins of the flesh? Am I going to continue that way? Is that what that carnality is talking about? Or is it something different? I think we need to examine that. Perhaps we will, because Mr. Stuckey does in another video.